So now we're ready to talk about how do you compute expected values involving joint random variables. And so remember that in one random variable, we define the expected value as basically the integral of whatever function we have with respect to the PDF dx, right? Same thing is true now, except if I have a function that involves both x and y, I need to use the joint PDF instead of the marginal. So if I have some function of both x and y, it kind of stands to reason that what I do is I integrate these possible values across the joint PDF dx dy. Okay, I guess I need to parentheses like this. So um, we'll do an example of this in, in a couple minutes. Um, one thing that makes life easier is that for specific functions, I don't have to do a lot of work, right? I know already from the fact that the expected value is linear, that if I have some linear function of x and y, that this is just a times the expected value of x plus b times the expected value of y. Okay, so that makes life a little bit easier. Um, now, we defined the uh, variance, right, as basically this expected value of x minus its mean squared. Okay, this was called the variance. And I don't think I said so at the time, but this is also known as the second moment. Or actually the second central moment. What this means, sorry about that, what, what this means is that I could have the kth moment of just one random variable as the expected value of x to the k, and then I could have the kth central moment as the expected value of x minus its mean to the k. So really the variance is like this with k equals 2. And sometimes if you look at uh, you know probability textbooks, you'll see things called like the skew and the kurtosis. This is what happens when you have k equals like 3 and 4 and so on. You rarely have to deal with that in kind of a first probability class. Now when I got two random variables, then things are more complicated because I could have you know one power for x and one power for y. So basically there is such a thing as the j kth moment for a joint random variable, which is basically the expected value of x to the j, y to the k, which I would get using the sheet of paper previously, where I'm integrating this function against the uh, joint distribution, right? Now, these moments give us some sense about how x and y are related to each other, and that's what the topic of this lesson and the next one is going to be about. But there's really one that we care about a lot, and that is called the correlation. We give it a special name. So with j equals 1 and k equals 1, we get the correlation between x and y. And that's just defined as the expected value of x, y. And again, just as a reminder, how would I get it? I would do this integral. dx, dy. Okay. Now, we also care about what happens when I take the um, kind of central moment like this. And so the covariance is the name that we give that. So the covariance between x and y is the expected value of x minus its mean times y minus its mean. Okay. And by linearity, I can work this out to say, okay, well, this is like the expected value of xy minus mu x e of y minus mu y e of x plus mu x mu y. And I can actually see that this is the same as mu y, this is the same as mu x, and so I get some cancellations, and what I actually find out is that this is equal to the expected value of xy minus mu x mu y. So it's like the correlation minus the product of the means. And actually, this kind of makes sense because, you know, remember that we define the covariance, or I'm sorry, we define the variance of one random variable as um, basically the expected value of x squared 
minus the expected value of x all squared, right? Now the same thing is true here. The covariance, right? If I think about um, putting in both, you know, if I just have, you know, y equals x, then I get exactly the same thing, right? So if I have uh, the covariance of x against itself is basically the same as the variance of x, okay? So it makes it it makes sense that we call this the covariance because it's like kind of x varying against something else, okay? So critical concept. Last time we talked about this idea of independence, okay? So if x and y are independent, what happens? So let me write that on a separate sheet. So if x and y are independent, let's work out what that integral would look like, right? expected value of xy would be equal to this integral, xy times the joint. Now we know that independence means that I can decouple the joint into the product of the two marginals. So what I actually have is xy times this marginal times this marginal, dx dy. And now I can see that I've got basically an x part and a y part. And if I write it in that way, I can take the x part out and do that dx. And I can take the y part out and do that dy. And this is just the expected value of x times the expected value of y. So that would mean that the uh, correlation between x and y in this case would just be the product of the means, and that would mean that the covariance is equal to zero, okay? And we give that a special name called uncorrelated, okay? So let me write that down um, specifically. So if the covariance of two random variables is zero, they are uncorrelated. Okay, and we just proved that if two random variables are independent, therefore they are also uncorrelated. Now, as I'll show in the next lesson, that's the reverse of this is not true, right? So, you know, independence implies uncorrelated, but I could have two random variables that have covariance equal to zero that are not independent. Okay, so we'll do an example of that in just a second. So let me just do a practice uh, integration that gives you some sense of how I do this um, you know, in the real world. So let's suppose that I have a joint PDF given by this. So basically I have X and Y, oh, I'm sorry, X and Y are defined inside the unit square. So this is kind of like my domain of integration. And inside there, the PDF is x plus y. And then you have to convince yourself this was a valid PDF by doing the integral and finding equal to one. I'm just gonna skip that part. What if I wanna know what is the covariance of this pair of random variables, okay? Well, I would need to compute two things, right? I basically need to compute this part and I need to compute this part. So let's do the uh, expected value of x. Expected value of x is just the integral from minus infinity to infinity, really though x only ranges from zero to one, of x times the joint dx, I guess I have to do this on both sides, dx dy, right? So I have basically, you know, let's do the, um, I don't know, let's just write this out for a second. What's easier? Let's do the x integral first. So that means that I have um, one third x cubed plus one half x squared y from x equals one to x equals zero dy. So that's equal to one third plus one half y. Integrate that from zero to one dy. And there I have one third y plus one quarter y squared from y equals one to y equals zero, and that's one third plus a quarter is seven twelfths, okay? 
So that's my expected value of x. By symmetry, expected value of y is going to be the same because you know flipping this with y here is going to give me basically the same integration process. So now I have to compute what is the expected value of xy. And again, this is just integration, nothing for it. So I have xy times x plus y dx dy. So I'm going to get an x squared y plus an xy squared dx dy. Doesn't really matter. Let's do the x1 first. Again, you could use Wolfram Alpha to do this, but you know, honestly, by the time I type this in, it will be just faster to do it this way. So I have one third y plus one half y squared. How fast can he integrate? It's amazing. Hopefully, I'm not making any mistakes. I guess, actually, this is like a dy here. So I should get one third, right? So now I have the covariance is going to be expected value of xy minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y, which is one third minus seven twelfths squared. And so I have to figure out what the actual number here is. This would be 48 over 144. This would be 49 over 144. So I get negative 1 over 144. Okay. So first of all, since the covariance is not equal to 0, I can say that these variables are correlated, right? They're not uncorrelated. And one other thing to note is that I found out here the covariance is negative, and that's okay. Um, you know, unlike the regular variance, there's no rule that says this has to be positive. Um, and we're going to talk in the next lesson about uh, how do I interpret this in some useful way? It actually makes more sense to scale this according to the variances of x and y, and that's what we're going to do in the very next lesson. So I'll see you there.